Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how you can create a neon portal effect in Photoshop. And I'm going to start right now. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is James and if it is the very first time to this channel and you want to learn all about Photoshop, Lightroom and everything photography related, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. So in this tutorial guys I'm going to show you how you can create a neon portal effect in Photoshop. Now I love making portals in Photoshop, it's one of my favourite kind of techniques to do. So today I'm going to share with you one of my favourite ways of making portal. And this only requires a single photo, so there's no overlays and it's all going to be using effects in Photoshop. So if you'd like to use the same photo that I'm going to be using in this tutorial, then go ahead to the link in the description. But without further ado guys, let's get started. Right guys, so the very first thing you want to do is go ahead and choose a photo. And today I'm going to be choosing this photo which I got off of unsplash.com and the link will be in the description for this photo. So what we want to do today is to create a portal in the center of this photo. And it's really easy and we're only going to be using just a few tools in Photoshop and I'm going to show you today. So what we want to do is we'll go ahead and get a select our background. We want to create a portal. Now you can make it any shape you like, but today I'm going to be making a circular portal. But again, you can make a square, hexagon, triangle, it's completely up to you. So what we want to do is go over to the left hand side tools panel and we want to find where you can see the ellipse tool. Now it might be called the rectangle tool, but if you click and hold you can see you'll get a bunch of different shapes appear. But today I'm going to be using the ellipse tool. So we'll go ahead and select the ellipse tool. Now what we want to do is draw an ellipse in the centre of this photo. So we hold down and click and drag, as you can see a, portal, a circle will appear. Now I want to create a perfectly circular portal, so what we're going to do is hold down shift and what it will do is it will scale it perfectly for you. So we'll go ahead and sort of make a portal like so. Lovely, so we've made a circle like this, but what we want to do is just have the outside selected or the stroke having it of white and not having the insert selected. So what we'll do is go to our fill icon and we want to just select none, which is the little circle, little square with the white line through it. So we'll go ahead and select it like so. And then what we'll do is we'll also select the black uh, as a foreground for the stroke and we'll go ahead and just choose white. Now as you can see the portal is a little, the circle is a little bit too thick at the moment so what we're going to do is I'm just going to reduce this down to around 20 pixels and that's the thickness of the stroke and we'll go ahead and press enter. Lovely, so I'm ha a lot happier with that. So we'll just call this ellipse, so I'm just going to call this portal 1. And then what we want to do is just press command T and this is where you can move the portal around or move the um, circle around accordingly. So I'm going to place it in the center of the photo there like so. And just to confirm it, all you need to do is press enter on your keyboard. Lovely, so what we want to do now is add like an ambient glow to this portal. And we're going to do it in three separate stages. So first we're going to create a nice hard shape and then we're going to feather it out to make a more of a kind of depth to the neon glow. So what we're going to do is go to our first neon portal and we want to double click on this layer and this will bring up our layer stylizing box. So we'll go ahead and double click like so and as you can see a new layer box will appear and this is called our layer stylizing box. And this allows us to add all sorts of effects and textures to uh, the layer that you have selected. But today what we want to do is go all the way down right to the second to bottom where you can see it says outer glow. So we'll go ahead and select outer glow like so. Now I'm going to turn it just to default, it will be what you would see in Photoshop. And it's broken up into three different sections. So we've got structure, elements and quality. So in our structure, this is the colour and the opacity. In the elements is the size of the kind of um, glow that you're creating. And in quality is the size or jitter uh, and also the range. So in our uh, structure setting, we're going to go and select screen as our blending mode. We want to select, firstly, we want to select an opacity of 90%, and this is where we want to choose the colour. So today, I'm going to be choosing a green colour, but again, it's completely up to you. So I'm going to go and select a green, like so. Now, what we want to do is to increase the size, because at the moment, we can't see it. So what we're going to do is increase the size, probably, firstly, to maybe around 40 pixels. And as you can see, the glow effect is starting to appear. So once we're happy with that, all we need to do is simply press OK. But as you can see, it's not strong enough yet. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to break it down, like I was saying, into three different sections. So this is our kind of hard glow, and we're going to feather it out to kind of create more of an ambient look to this glow. So we're going to go ahead and just press Command J on our keyboard. What that will do is that will duplicate the layer. You can also drag it down to the new layer icon in the bottom right hand corner, which is found just down here. And what we want to do is go to the portal layer. So we're going to call this portal one, and we're going to call the one below it portal two like so. And then again, we want to double click on that layer and it'll bring up our layer stylizing box. But this time we want to increase the size to 80 pixels. And then we want to just drop down the opacity to probably around 60. Lovely. And as you can see, the glow is now starting to add a little bit more. And then what we want to do is just again, duplicate it one more time. So we'll press Command J. And then this time we're just going to drop that down and we're going to name this one Portal 3. And then what we want to do is add a little bit more of a glow. So again, drop the opacity and then increase the size. So we're gonna to go to our outer glow settings. We're gonna drop the opacity to probably around 40%. And then we're gonna increase the size to 120. And then we press enter. As you can see, the glow is looking a lot more realistic. But I want to add more of like a, an electricity effect, like the kind of electricity is running through the portal and kind of adds a little bit of uh, interest to the portal instead of just having kind of just a, a glowing portal. So what we can do is go ahead and just select the very top portal or portal one. And we want to duplicate that. And this one, we're going to call it portal E for electricity. So we'll go ahead and just call that portal E for electricity. So now what we want to do is we want to add a kind of like a electricity effect. So what we would do is go to filter. We want to go to distort and we want to go to ripple. Now ripple will kind of distort the image or distort the pixels into kind of a ripple effect like water for instance. Now it will pop up with this extra dialog box and this will just ask us it to convert it into a smart object. And we do want to convert it into a smart object. This will allow us to change the effect afterwards if you're finding it's a little bit too strong in when you're creating kind of your final image. So what we're gonna do is just uh, zoom to where you can see it says where it is. And as you can see, it's created this nice kind of electricity effect. Now what we want to do is go to the amount. We want to select 500% and with the size, we want to go into head and select large. But again, you can experiment with this. It's completely up to you what for, uh, kind of uh, sizes you choose, but these will be the sizes for what I'm gonna be choosing today. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, it's added in this nice ripple effect, but it doesn't look realistic anymore because it's been placed above that layer. So all we need to do is just press Command and then back bracket, and what that will do is that will just drop it below that layer. And as you can see, this effect works really nicely now, and I am really happy with the result. But what we want to do now is add in a little bit more of an ambient kind of lighting effect, because obviously if there's a glowing portal in the middle, naturally it would kind of glow on the floor and kind of glow up the walls. So we can do, we can create this effect just by creating a gradient map. So what we do is go ahead and select our background layer. We're gonna go down to our adjustment layers and we want to go ahead and select gradient map, which is the second to bottom one. So we'll go ahead and select it like so. Now, as you can see, it's, it's turned it is an uh, image really, really bright green. So what we want to do is go ahead and select in our gradient map, we can select this section here. Now our gradient map works by creating a gradient depending on the luminosity of the color below it. So what we'll do is the left hand side will create, um, will be on the dark pixels and the right hand side will be on the brightest pixels and it creates a gradient throughout the image. So on our right hand side, we want to create the lightest color. So we'll go ahead and select the lightest color like so. And again, we want to select a fairly bright green, fairly white green like so. And then on the, in the middle, we want to select to have an, a location of 50%, like so. And this color, we want a nice bright green. And then on the left-hand side, we want a nice dark green. And we'll select dark green, like so. And then we'll go ahead and just with our gradient editor, we just want to click OK. So we want dark pixels on the left-hand side and then light pixels on the right-hand side with a bright image or bright pixel in the middle. So once we've done this, we want to change the blending mode of this to screen, as it's the same blending mode that we used in our previous uh, layer. So we'll go ahead and select screen like so. Now, as you can see, it's covering the entire image. We don't necessarily want that to be affected. So what we'll do is we'll press Command I, and what that will do is it will flip the uh, colors from black to, or from white to black. 
so that will change our layer mask so it's completely invisible. And this is where we can start painting in the effect. So we'll go ahead and select the brush tool, which is B on our keyboard, or you can go over to the left hand side tools panel. And then what we want to do is drop the opacity or drop the flow to around 10%. So we'll go ahead and select flow like so. And all we want to do is just start adding in, make sure we've got white as our foreground layer. We just want to start adding in kind of a glow on the floor. So we'll go ahead and start adding in glow like so. And we'll add in glow just on the walls here. I'm not gonna go up too high. And we're just gonna add in glow just here, like so. Lovely. So I'll add it in here. Right, so once you're happy with the amount of glow, what we want to do is we just want to remove it from any of the really dark pixels. Because this will add a sense that it's kind of reflecting, because uh, it won't obviously, won't be reflecting off the shadows. So what we can do is go to our gradient map selection. We want to double click and it will bring up again our layer stylizing box. Now in our blend if options, in our blending options, we've got two kind of sliders here and the bottom slider affects the underlying layer. So again, we want to use our gradient map to reflect what's on the underlying layer. So we want to remove any of the, the kind of colors from the darkest pixels. So we can do this by using our slider on the bottom and just dragging it to the right. And if we have a look, as you can see, it's removing it from all of the shadows. Now to create a more of a consistent look or more of a gradient, if we hold down Alt, what it can do is it can break this little icon apart. And what it will do is it will just kind of create a more even kind of gradient between the bright and the darks. So we can do, and you can just fiddle it around, moving these left and right until you are completely happy with the result. So I'm gonna probably add it in a little bit more, like so. Lovely, and then all we need to do is press OK. Now I am really, really happy with this, with this photo so far. And I think all I'm going to do now is add in just two extra effects. So with the, I'm just gonna add a color lookup layer and then I'm gonna add a vignette. So I'm going to go to our adjustment layers icon again, guys. I'm gonna to go to color lookup and I think I'm just gonna add an overall green tone to this. And I know a really good LUT file that will work with this photo. So we'll go ahead and select our LUT files. I'm gonna go all the way down to where you can see right at the bottom called Tension Green. And this will add in a nice amount of green to the photo. And I think all I'm gonna do is just simply drop, drop the opacity down to around 50%. So if I have a look at the before and after, oh, I'm really happy with that look. And the last thing I'm gonna do is make a vignette. So I'm gonna to go to our, my adjustment layers icon. I'm gonna to go to Curves. I'm going to go to our Curves section. I'm gonna drop this down to the center. And then I'm going to drop the midtones down as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and select my gradient tool. I'm going to make sure I've got my layer mask selected. And then I'll make sure I've got black as my foreground layer. And I'm just going to draw out in the center like so. And it'll create a nice kind of gradient to the exterior. And I'll do the before and after. Brilliant. And I'm really happy with this neon portal. And there we go, guys. So that is how you can create a neon portal effect in Photoshop. Brilliant. And there we go, guys. So that is how I created this neon portal effect in Photoshop. And I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did creating it. Again, guys, if you want to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, it really, really does help my channel grow. Also, if you want to hit the bell notification, so you don't miss any of my latest content. But until next time guys, keep creating.